Okay, so I had this case at the top of the screen there, and I wanted to make another one for this other shotgun. So, started out with some pieces of wood, picked through my pile, and came up with these pieces here. And then I'm gonna start cutting these to width. And I'm also going to be doing this as a dovetail project. So this jig is from Peach Tree. It's a very easy dovetail jig to use. Here I need exactly five inches between the fence and the blade, so I'm using my setup blocks. These are called one, two, three blocks and really good for getting accurate uh, measurements. With two of them, you can come up all different types of um, widths in order to set. Okay, so I'm using this little end vise here. It's my cheap and dirty Moxon vise. I don't keep this vise in here very often, but it's perfect for cutting uh, dovetails. So if you have flexibility when you're making a box like this, it's real nice to be able to put the dovetails at the exact distance into the fixture. That way you're not having different size dovetails on either end. So this is a really handy vise, and uh, as you can see here, I usually like putting tape around the wood in order to prevent tear out and then you just line this up on each edge again that's why I cut it exactly at five inches it could have been exactly five and a half six I did have some flexibility with the the width of this box so you can actually cut the dovetails at the same time and here I'm marking the width of the board and that's how deep I'm going to make the dovetail I could have done this with a pencil I just happened to have a marking knife there so I did that and then I'm adjusting the depth of the dovetail and starting to make those cuts So this fixture is really an idiot-proof fixture. It has guide bearings on it, and as long as you have the depth set correctly and the fixture set well on the wood, you just run the bit in nice and slow and you'll get beautiful cuts. Okay, so once the the dovetails and the pins are cut, you have to cut a groove for the top and the bottom of the box. So this you can run all the way through, and it's not going to show on the other side because it's going to be covered up. So now I have all the grooves put in the box sides front and back and just cleaning it up a little bit and here's the initial dry fit again this fixture is terrific and it cuts perfect dovetails it's really really nice if you don't have one and plan on doing any boxes i'd suggest getting one they're really not that expensive, I think a little over $100. 
Okay, now on to work on the top and the bottom of the box. Luckily I had some wood that was white enough. And so here I'm just trimming it up to width. Love walnut. Oh, it was my favorite wood. So I'm putting raised panels on the top and the bottom. And here I'm uh, got my big panel cutting bit on my uh, router. This is also my table saw, as you can see. So this feature on this grizzly table saw is very nice. When cutting items like this, uh, you always do the end grains first because you're going to get a little bit of tear out and then you can do the long sides. But yeah, whenever routing on a piece of wood, use the end grain. Another trick when doing this is you don't have to take the final pass on the first pass. I actually took two different passes again in an effort to reduce any tear out. So here's what it's looking like in the initial uh, fit. On to sanding. Everybody's favorite part of a project. But certainly with a project like this, you would want to do the sanding ahead of time before assembly. Much easier to sand now. These Festool sanders are fantastic. Almost literally dust free. Okay, with everything sanded, we're going to go through the real glue up. And I just use a little solder brush here and get glue in all the joints. I cut the pins and the tails slightly proud so that I can sand them perfectly smooth. Now the nice thing about dovetails is they're self-squaring once you put them together and clamp them. You don't even have to worry about square, they just square it by themselves. Okay, so now you gotta put the top and the bottom in and as you know, or you should know, when you're gluing up a box like this, you don't glue in the panel. You have to leave uh, space in there in order for the wood to shrink and contract as the seasons change. So if you actually glued these panels in, there's a very good chance they're going to split at some point in time. If they're floating inside there, you have the space in order for the wood to move. So never glue in a panel.
Okay, so a little clampy clamp clamp. And I'll have to go do something else for a little while. Tons of different projects going on in the shop. So let's let this thing dry up. So here's always a fun part, cutting off the top of the box. So I like doing the top and the bottom first. And just be real careful when you do this. It's so much easier to do it this way, make one big box and cut the top off versus trying to make a top and a bottom. Okay, I have three of the cuts made now. And I gotta do the fourth cut. However, I wanna take a break here and I'm gonna go get a little wedge. Actually, it's a shim. And the shim is gonna help keep the cut at the same thickness and it's gonna prevent any binding or damage to the to the wood. So here's a quick little test fit. Gun's fitting in there just fine. Now I gotta start working on the insides, the separators. Of course that part is very easy to do. It's just a few boards. And here's where I needed to build something to hold onto the back. So I grabbed a little piece of maple out of the scrap bin on a one inch Forstner bit and just cutting the bottom of the groove and then cutting the groove out with the uh, bandsaw. Needed two of these. And then I just cut these to length. A little bit of sanding and glued them in. So a couple clamps, a little bit of glue. Again, time to go do something else. So I ended up putting a coat of walnut gel stain on here. And quite honestly, I think it came out too dark. I wish I had just put oil on it. I did end up putting oil on top of this gel stain and it's, it's very dark but overall it still looks pretty good. Okay so once this is dry I had to work on a strategy in order to do some type of lining inside of the box. So I went back to my old high school days and came up with a product called flocking. So I really didn't have the ability to go buy some nice fuzzy cloth that I was going to line this with. So I ended up using this flocking material. And flocking is a very fine powder. Yeah, powder. And once you paint it on, use a flashlight to make sure that every little piece is covered. So you be very careful painting this. And I'm only really flocking these two sections. The other sections are going to be coated, as you'll see, with foam.
And then you get the old flocking sprayer out. Kind of looks like an old pesticide sprayer. And you fill this with this powder and this comes in all different color, kinds of colors. And you just spray this on. And you wait 24 hours, let it dry nice and tight and it comes up with a very nice felt-like texture. Okay, so for the final top coat, I'm just going to use my old standby finish, Johnson's Pace Wax. This just helps rub off any of the high spots from either the stain or the oil that I put on there and gives it a nice protective coating. Plus makes it smooth, makes it very, very smooth. I've been doing this since I've been in high school. Very nice finish. Okay, time to put on the piano hinge. And I also bought some hasp from Amazon to put on the front, some locking hasp. So I take a couple minutes to put on this piano hinge, not a big deal. So I put a little piece of blue tape on here in order to draw some lines exactly where I wanted to put these two locking hasp. Little drill, drill, drill. Okay, so once I got both hasp on, I put the handle on as well. And this pretty much wraps up the project to, until I get new foam. So, I hope you like the project. I like it a lot. As a matter of fact, I liked it so much, I'm going to make another one for my black powder rifle. So, here's just a few shots of it. So thanks very much for spending a few moments of your day with me. I had a good time with this project and I hope you liked it and you know the drill. If you like my content, please like, comment, and subscribe. i got plenty more projects coming up in Bob's Woodshop. Bye.